we've known each other since college in uh, Wisconsin until we all moved to Minnesota in different for different reasons, different bands. Um, but yeah, we haven't put some new music out for quite a while now, yeah. and uh, we're really excited about having a new record out. Did some vinyl and uh, did all the streaming. Um, but um, yeah, we're excited. There's four of us. Uh, I play drums. John plays keyboards. I'm John, and I play keyboards. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then there's also uh, Dan Garris plays bass and sings backups, and Mark Miller uh, plays guitar and sings. That's fantastic. But you have played in a number of bands together. How, what was the iteration of, how did you get to where you are? Well, uh, Mark and Dan um, asked me to join their band in the 90s. They were called Captain Sunshine, and I played with them for a while, and we moved to Minneapolis under that name, and then... Broke up not too long after. <laughs> <laughs> it and, happens. Yep. And then, but the three of us um, kept playing and we tried, we played with different drummers and um, eventually Greg's ska band broke up and <laughs> as they do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's too many of us. <laughs> the whole a, horn section, yeah, you need two buses for that. <laughs> <laughs> right. So we started just jamming with him and it felt really great and we had always been friends and we had been in bands before so it was a really natural fit and that was 99 i think man that's a long time ago yeah yeah <laughs> i mean that, i'm yeah, that's a lot that is, that is a long time but as you said you haven't put out new music for a while right but you've had, done a lot of playing in different ways sure yeah we, we did we had a few albums in the 2000s and a, you know some eps and then in 2011 we did a web project where we released um, two songs a month, a cover and an original, online. Um, I think those are all on YouTube. Well, yeah. Um, well, and that is really, a lot of bands do that now through social media, but in the yeah. early 2000s, that was ahead of its time. Right. We were, they were just yeah. posted on our website with our URL that was, we had to stream it ourselves. Yeah, it was a lot of fun and uh, I think a lot more work than anyone any of us anticipated trying to produce two songs a month um, you know, for an entire year, but uh, it was a it was a ton of fun. Yeah, I mean that's yeah, it's gotta be like a marathon of music. Right. And, and then since then, you know, we've always talked about having another album, but it never quite came about. And we've had these songs that we've been kicking around. You know, some of them go back to that 2011 project. Um, so. It's a new album for us, but the songs are not necessarily new, in some cases quite old. How do you choose which ones to have? I mean, you must have, well, clearly two a month. You had dozens <laughs> and dozens. <laughs> um, well, we, you know, we put a pool together of the songs that we liked, that we thought sounded good, that were candidates, and we had about, I don't know, 20 or so, and just um, whittled it down from there. Should we play one of the songs? Please. That'd be yeah. Great. What would you like us to play? Um, let's see. How about fourth gen? Um, oh boy. That one is um it's a a fun track, um, and my daughter is singing backup vocals oh, on this one. Mm -hmm. nice. So um she would love to hear herself on the radio. So um this one, um I think Mark told the story that uh John Miller, the guy that we recorded with uh, at Future Condo Studios in South Minneapolis, um, after the first take of this song, he said, um, all right, you guys can come in, uh, listen to it, or you can do another take, but if you do another take, I'm going to kick your butts. <laughs> so uh, I think he liked the first take, nice. and it was just one and done on this one, and, and yeah. it turned out great. And I'm, I'm playing a very, very nice Steinway concert grand piano, and I'm banging on it. <laughs> How did you manage to get that? Or well, is that, that your so, use? That's one that John has in <laughs> nice. Chicago Studios. Oh, so it's just right there. tuned the day before. It was immaculate. And As a piano player, I am very yes. jealous of this. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And I'm playing it like it's like it owes me money. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's listen. Dallas Arbiter. Oh. 
be for a few. <laughs> I just step out of the oven. It, it's, it's warm in here. It's nice in January. It's getting old in uh, August. Sister-in-law's tuning in. I hear you're go cool. <laughs> <laughs> There's another song where I take much better advantage of that piano. <laughs> which, which one? Fragile. Oh yeah, we should do that one. Oh yeah. Well. Okay. <laughs> it's only up to you what you. Yeah. What do you think? I think the branch on the Fourth Gen by Dallas Orbiter, and we have members of Dallas Orbiter in studio. Hi! Woo! <laughs> That's the, I, that sounds great. It's like the, I like that piano sound. I like, and I love the voice of your daughter. Oh, thanks. Yeah. T now, how did that come about this year? Uh, she loves to sing. And, she's a great singer. Yeah, and she's got a great ear. She can pick notes out like nobody, nobody's business. And uh, we had most of the recording done at the studio and uh, we had an afternoon where we were doing overdubs and um, I got a call from Mark that said, you know, we're going to do some vocals and I said, I'm bringing Maggie. I bet she'd want to sing. And nice. she was all about it. She nice. came out to the studio and just dug it and she thinks it's so cool. How old is she? She's 10. Nice. And how old was Maggie when she first sang the Ramones with us in our practice? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> she was like four. <laughs> yeah. That's fantastic. We, we've, we've got a, a semi-secret uh, Instagram account where we uh, send out music, and we actually did, um, let's see, what was the Ramones tune that got attention from the Ramones? It was... Um, Who's a four-year-old singer? I, I might be sedated. <laughs> I think it was She Has a Punk Rocker, I Oh, think. Perfect. Um, yeah, no, she's always been very musical. So that's fun. Is that? Are there other ways that you intermingle family and real life with the music? Um, you know, my wife's family is very musical as well. They're all they're a brass family. So, Ooh, um, well, that and, fits the ska background. Huh? Uh, yeah, and um, if, funnily enough, uh, I met my wife's brother in college uh, playing in bands. He was a fantastic keyboard player. And we played in a few groups together and just met in, you know, musician circles uh, far before I ever met my wife. So I was pre-approved by Mark once I met my wife. He was like, oh, I know him. Yeah, he's fine. <laughs> He'll do. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's fantastic. I, uh, I seduced my future wife at the time recording our 2007 album by arranging vocal parts for her to, to, um, to sing. Oh, that uh, is vocal. smooth. Yes. That's. Nice. And does she do singing otherwise, or is she? Um, well, 
Was that the she's jump? She's a good of singer, her? and she also has a degree in flute performance. But oh, she's wow. uh, a professional uh, dietitian now. Okay, that is a lot of musicality coming in around both of you. Yeah, it, coming it, from a family that does it have birthday to you, have birthday to you, like no <laughs> musical whatsoever. <laughs> that I just I find that fascinating. It must make such a difference. But I yeah, I think uh, you know it takes a special kind of person to stick with. A, a specific thing like playing an instrument for you know 40 years or whatever it is um so I, I think to have like the background of the family that is kind of into it as well there's a little bit of support there where they're you know they don't think you're completely insane for playing drums when you're you know yeah when, yeah when you've got kids and all that so it seems you know it's funny what you're talking about that i think it, it that seems more practical than people who continue with the same sport for you know <laughs> Maybe, uh, yeah. You can you can play drums and watch a three year old. You can't play football and watch a three year old. You know what I mean? Like, I mean it just seems that like that's yeah. and at a certain point the music stays with you longer. Yeah. It, yeah, that's true. Tell us about your upcoming show. Get We're playing at Mortimer's on Friday the thirteenth of September. Um with some other bands, <laughs> uh, up, upright forms, and um, field hospitals. Nice, yes. nice, nice. Yeah. How did you choose Mortz, or did Mortz choose you? Well, um, I think Mark secured that show, and he's not here today. So, <laughs> yeah, he's been doing the legwork of getting us kind of back in the scene. Because yeah, uh, how's that going? I mean. Well, I mean, How does it feel? It, it changes. It's changed a lot since we, you know, played shows. We used to play all around town back in the early two thousands, yeah. and um, and there were so many places to play then. Um, you know, we played, you know, four hundred bar and yeah, big V's was a yes. favorite, and the hexagon, and oh. um, of course, you know, turf club and. Oh, I forget where. It was. We did a few shows at Seventh Street. Seventh Street Entry. Um, but um, yeah, Big V's was so much fun. We always, it was so much fun. <laughs> we always had a great time there and played with some fantastic other bands there as well. And so I think we may have played there more than anywhere else. Could be. Um, just because we just enjoyed it so much. Nice. I'm a St. Paul girl, so I, Big V's, Turf Club, <laughs> perfect. Yeah. So yeah, the scene's changed a ton, um, you know, and we've just been kind of out of the loop. So yeah. It's been a little bit of work getting back in, but we've got some friends that uh, have ends, and Mark's been doing a lot of work, and we've got a great publicist um, that's been doing a lot of nice. work for us. Nice, yes. Uh, Krista, hey, you guys know Krista? <laughs> yes, yes, Krista's fantastic. She's doing some great work, uh, just getting our name back out there and, you know, um, getting music out and getting uh, some publicity for us, so. it's great. Because there are a lot of clubs, sometimes we marvel at, post-pandemic, a lot of clubs open. Cloudland and Pillar yeah. Farm and Sora. Sora. Yeah. You've been to more than I have, for yeah. sure. But it it is funny to see that shift. Yeah. yeah. And they're different. Like, Cloudland and Big V's, there's no, that's that's an apple and a steak. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's just very different. I mean, yeah. and I like them both. But mm -hmm. they're very, but it's got to be. And how does it feel to be playing some of these places? Are you? Uh, we don't know I, yet. That's what I was going to say. This is—I thought it's this been, was the first one. Yeah, I—I uh, I did go see Upright Forms at Zora Darling. Okay. Um, and that place was fun. I had never been in that back room there. Yeah. So, um, it's—it's it's fun to see that there's some new fun places to play. And what, having having done what you did all the online album and all of that, how do you modify for the live performance? Do you? Know? How are you planning to modify? Or do you not need to? Or Well, I think... How do you bring your a 10-year-old to sing with you? you know? <laughs> I wish I could. She really wants to be there. Maybe not Mort. Yeah. <laughs> In the cloud land, maybe. Maybe not Mort. I think this this most recent album is unique for us in that it, it more captures the sound of what we sound like playing live. Um, the stuff we did in the 2000s yeah. was really, um, you know, studio-driven. You know, we would throw you know, drumsticks in a dryer and record that or um, all kinds of crazy instruments like you know a saw or you know you throw everything at the wall but um, this was very much just the four of us playing in and, um, and it sounds like a very idealized version of what you hear when you go see us in a club 
yeah, there aren't a whole lot of overdubs or studio tricks. Um, you know, like John said, we we used to do a lot more of that because it was fun and we, yeah. we like to learn new stuff and we kind of worked through that. But um, man, we just love to play. So um, when we went to Future Condo, we did it just as four piece and did some overdubs for vocals and guitars and and solos and things like that. But no like studio trickery. There's you know very little um, like outboard effects that we added afterwards things like that just real straight up just what the band sounds like and um, yeah we've been playing together for you know, 25 years so um, we like to think that we're we're pretty tight we got uh, all the songs on the album um, like the basic tracks done in just a couple days nice but I think that the, the road that you've traveled having done some of the more esoteric stuff before kind of feeds into what you're doing now because you're the sound is very rich it's you know you're like oh that's it's it's funny because as I'm watching it play on the files and I can you know I'm, I'm visually watching the mm -hmm. songs I'm like oh, it's fun just to see how that jumps up and down and I, I, mean, I just think it's the silences are you know well spaced with the other music but it all kind of comes to a to an edge at one point sure yeah like the pixies yeah <laughs> Should we play another song? Sure. Um, how about To the Breakdown? Do you want to tell us about it now or after? I can it's... talk a little about it now. Okay. Um, as much as I know. I didn't write the song. Mark did. <laughs> but um, he has said it evoked this um, memory he had of a party in the woods um, that went south for a number of reasons. And... Um, you can hear, uh, you'll hear the sirens um, that he mentions in the song uh, played out with a synth line that I have. Okay. Here we go. I didn't know that backstory until I listened to the last thing that, John, that Mark did. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because. I'm such a rhythm nerd, I don't listen to the words, I don't listen to anything, I just play the drums and <laughs> try to do the right thing. That's funny. I didn't know it until after we recorded it, but I was talking to Mark, Mark about it one night. <laughs> hey, when you're in the middle of the song, it's like asking the worm what color the apple is. The air blood also <laughs> sees us. Mm -hmm. Hi, Aaron. We're on. No, we're on. <laughs> I go see shows with Eric, Krista's husband, once in a while. We go out to metal shows together. We, saw, we saw The Well at uh, 7th Street. Oh, with, nice. Uh, um, uh, let's see, what's, um, spacing on the local stoner rock band. Uh, Red, no, not Red Fang. Uh, no, they'll come to me. <laughs> anyway, yeah, we've seen Sleep. Yeah, they have a great time. Fun. Metal shows. That's, you're more metal than I. Yeah. But sometimes you bring me to some good metal shows. Pantera at first seven. That one didn't suck. <laughs> and I'm sure I was wearing <laughs> a dress. <laughs> I saw Pantera in 1991 at Alpine Valley. Ooh. Oh, wow. That was amazing. 
They were fun. I, yeah. yeah. It was just cool to see them at first set and have members of Metallica pop up. It was cool. I got to play at first half. Did you? In February. With what project? With the Steely Dan tribute band. Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay. Fun. Is that one that you're normally in, or was uh, that kind of a one-off? I'm a substitute. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Oh. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> Playing at first half is obviously a big point of fun this thing. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. We've got Prince's motorcycle in the back. Yep. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Did they let you down in the basement and stuff, or no? Um. Like, I didn't know I wasn't in the basement. Okay. Like, that's where they had their liquor and stuff, but it's cool to, like, wander down there because there's random stuff people have left think, and they just leave huh. it there. I think that's where the reader was used to be. Okay. I'm just basing that off purple rain. <laughs> <laughs> Everything I knew about history. I <laughs> look for Monty Python and Purple Rain. <laughs> uh, it's funny, the motorcycle. A high school friend of mine's dad did a lot of work on that. Oh, really? Really? He owned the Harley shop on Lindale and Lake. And he was Harley. Harley. Wow. She would always be mortified. Just, I don't know why my dad can't have a computer job like your dad. I'm like, I don't know why... You have a Harley in the gra- <laughs> like, grass. is always so greener. Exactly. I'm like, that was the coolest. But yeah, he did a lot of the... That's cool. Yeah. Everybody's got a... Everybody from the Twin Cities got this. Yeah. So, two seconds. Okay, I'm looking at the time. Do I have to do the call letters? I don't think I do. 122. To the breakdown by Dallas Orbiter, who we have in studio. Welcome. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks yeah, I I like that the backstory of that is a party in the woods. <laughs> As a St. Paul kid, I have spent many times partying at the river, if not in the woods. Oh, we won't tell. No, <laughs> no, I think I Yeah. Now I'd be in trouble. I'd be the one who was old enough to be there. <laughs> we were talking a little bit about where you've played before, but I when asked what are some of your favorite places to play? And that, that's a ringer question because you just mentioned that you had just played. Well, I have played... In a I, different iteration, that's okay. I have played a first half with a different band. <laughs> Shout out to Stealing Dan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, yeah, no, I have not played at First Avenue. But uh, like I said before, Big V's was so much yeah. fun to play at. Um, we had a lot of fun playing at the Hexagon. That was like right in the neighborhood yeah. that I lived in at the time and where we rehearsed. So it was just like three blocks away, and we'd go there and have a great time. We did a, a Kinks tribute tribute night there. Yeah, that was a Kinks fun. tribute. Oh, we played a um, uh, New Order, not New Order. What was um, what's the band? OMD? What? OMD? I always confuse the uh. Sorry. Doesn't matter. I know. Like, <laughs> New Order and OMD. Those Mark are just right, my part of my brain. <laughs> yeah. Um. Let's see, where else was fun? Um, we did our uh, CD release at the theater over in Dinky Town. Varsity. Yeah, the oh. Varsity Theater. Oh. That was a ton of fun. Yeah. Oh, that's, yeah. Um, and we played at that uh, theater that was in Uptown that was like a Packer bar. They right. showed Packer. Suburban World. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a fun place to play. Yeah. Um, I don't know that one. That might have been before my time up here. And then all the... Um, Heliotrope shows. Oh, yeah. Oh. Those are a ton of fun. I don't know if you guys remember those. They were kind of experimental. Yep. Like, groups would put on, like, a, a specific set for a, a show, and so we got invited to play that a few years. Oh, that's nice. And had a ton of fun preparing for that. Um, like, you know, we would base it off of a short story, like a sci-fi short story or some sort of theme, and then um, rehearse a couple times and then just pretty much improv when we got there. But it was... Uh, I forget the name of the theater on Franklin that they had it in for a few years. This big old theater, just empty because it wasn't really oh, big as a theater anymore. Uh, it's near Heart of the Beast does some of their stuff there. That oh, I think I do know where it is. Yeah. But they would bring in po- folks to do projections. Yeah. And, and you know they had a 
fog and the whole nine yards and they'd go you know uh late in the night people would stay up and and it was a ton of fun we had, we loved doing those shows that's kind of that's kind of our jam the whole like experimental the, kind of sci-fi pop that's rock. what i like a lot about the music is that you can you can feel that it's that some of the so the earlier stuff, it's more it's more obvious because you're using different instrumentation. But in the new stuff too, I'm like, that's got to There, there is. I always say, if it brings me back to the '70s when you know you'd be watching the you know uh, was it my uncle Martian or whatever. You know, some my, of those. That, uh, my favorite Martian. My fa- right? Thank you, yeah. my favorite Martian. Those kind, you know, there's just that kind of can't be sci-fi from that era yeah I think but, and there's just the sound a, is probably john you know hitting some of those like synth synth things but um yeah that's definitely inspiration for for the music um you know more of a uh experimental and kind of yeah. out there sound um you know early on we were probably really influenced by like okay computer radiohead was a you know, big deal when, I um, listened to it this morning. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Oops. <laughs> but you, that type of just like otherworldly sound is really attractive to me personally, anyway. I, yeah, I mean, I think it comes through, and I I like that part of it. I, I will always go for that kind of. I I can go for very experimental drone, not drones, and some of the hair specs that that kind of stuff for sure. But it's that a, a lot of what we play now when we're I mean. The last uh, you know decade since we did that web project, we get together still just about every week, and a lot of times we'll just look at each other and start playing, and we you know usually record it, so we have you know a whole body of, of work out there. But um, it's very you know it's very therapeutic, it's very expressive for us, and um, it's just so much fun. And we've started a, a side project to release some of those recordings. It's called Laser Bats from Mars. And um, so, so so far we have, I think, four tracks that we've just, and it's not edited really at all. We just like pull, you know, eight minutes of some night back in 2014 or something, and um, what we happen to be playing that night. And it's just a lot of fun going back and listening to that stuff. I bet, yeah. Yeah, so that stuff we're putting up on all the streaming services too, and um, it's more like cinematic um, and um, very ephemeral because you know we just play it and then we sometimes listen back to it two years later and we're like, oh my god, what were we thinking? Or how did I play that? I don't understand what I was doing there. What's that? So uh, it's a lot of fun to go back and listen to all that stuff and kind of pick things out. Um, so yeah, we're really excited about that little side. I listened too. to some of it and I, yeah, I just think it's fantastic. But you guys still play once a week together? Oh yeah. No, it, I find that to be amazing. It's what keeps me sane, personally. Like it, <laughs> playing drums like quiets the voices. It, you know, it's the thing. It's the thing. It's the you thing should for make me. a T-shirt that says that. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> it's the thing for me that like everything else just kind of shuts down when I'm playing drums. Um, so it's yeah, like he said, it's therapeutic, uh, definitely. And yeah, we get together once a week. Yeah, there was. I mean, I'm very fortunate, but for me, one of the hardest things about COVID was we didn't meet with the band for like a year and a half. And um, I remember the first time we got together just in somebody's backyard just to say hi, I cried. <laughs> it was very hard yeah. not to play. I didn't even play at home for a couple months. Like I went I went several months without playing a, a piano or keyboard, which I had never done since wow. I was probably three years old. Yeah, that, I mean, that, that would be like not brushing your teeth, I think. I mean, you know, really something right. that's so yeah. integral to who you are right. that what effect did that have? Did you go back with it with a fervor? Well, did, didn't you beat the heck out of the <laughs> <laughs> piano in the studio? Well, to be fair, I've always done that. <laughs> um, but, you know, getting back was, you know, of course, it was joyful if, just to be with our friends again, you know. And, yeah. And to be speaking to each other the way we speak to each other most often, which is by playing our instruments together. Um, yeah, I think I, I, uh, we've talked to each other by playing our instruments at this point years longer than we've actually had conversations with each other, which is uh, just because we get together once a week and for two hours we just do nothing but play it more or less. And uh, we definitely don't have two hours worth of conversations every week. So. No. 
<laughs> we don't like talking no. to each other. I, th- I think it's fantastic that you have that recorded because somewhere to listen to the, the breath of it would be, and are there some things you come back to or some things that are entirely new? Do they build off each other either week? Or, you know, does, you know, does today's session have more to do with last week's or what happened today in your lives? You know? Right. Yeah. Often it's just like whatever each of us are dealing with at the time. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's not always gold, I'll just say that much. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah well, yeah, you can't, can't be great every time. But No, like, how would you know the difference, I think? Yeah. Yeah, that's, you know, but, but it, there's, you can always take something out of it, you know. Sure. That, that really weird, you know, that awful sound can be, I imagine, tweaked to just sound, to go just, just strange. Right, <laughs> Which and is, a lot of times those sessions will... Um, Will lead to an idea for a song where Mark might take part of a groove or something and, and start start writing some lyrics to it. So, um, yeah, it's helpful that way too. I think all of us are very into playing our respective instruments, so we're all practicing on our own, and it's you know the thing that you can never learn everything about, right? You can right. You're never going to get as good as you as you can possibly be on your instrument. You're, there's always something to learn. So every week we get together, like the four of us start whipping out whatever we were working on the previous week or, you know, whatever little lick we were trying to figure yeah. out and, and see how it fits in with the band. And sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. When you're in the middle of it, are you like, mm, this is going nowhere? Or do you, does it feel good regardless? Um, or yes. You know, yes and yes. Yeah, sometimes. If I'm, if, sometimes if I'm really feeling it, I'll just zone out and, and do my thing. Sometimes if I'm not feeling it, I'll just stop playing. That's the easiest thing to do if you don't like what's going on. Um, but yeah, there's a, could always be a conversation. People know that if somebody drops out, maybe you should like move on to something else and try something different. We have our own little language. Yeah, and if it's not if it's not working, it's so malleable in the moment that you can just like, all right, nah, I'm going to change something up here yeah. and see what happens. And, mm-hmm. Well, sort of because I'm not a musician, I think, and I know that, like, we both agree, love to see something that's amazing or train wreck. Yeah. <laughs> and I can enjoy it. It's entertaining. You can enjoy the train right? wreck is, at, at least as much as something that's amazing. You know, yeah. it just, and just the whole experience of going to see music, a lot of it does have to do with what's on stage, and a lot of it doesn't. You know, you can have a good night and then. Yeah, some of the music I enjoy most is the stuff that's kind of tightrope walking, right? Like, it's people that are so good at their instruments but they're doing things that are so amazing yeah that like at any moment they could drop a stick they could you know flub it up and, and lose the momentum yeah and, but that's what's exciting about seeing live music absolutely yeah if i wanted perfection i'd stay at home <laughs> <laughs> and listen to albums i'm not <laughs> they're just a, yeah shall we play one more song sure all right what you got one in mind john I don't specifically um let's see you know, how about Fragile Epigram? Uh, sure. I mean, that's not as spacey as some of our other things, because it's, well, again, I'm playing that piano, which is very lovely. Um, sure, uh, let's play it. All right. Um, after I played this piano part, they just, how did they describe it? Um, like Ben Folds playing Gershwin or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Was this the one we, we were working on recording this one? Um, as a as a group, and then uh, Mark left to go. He he left the room, and you and Dan and I decided to take another swing at it with the tape rolling. I think, and that ended up being the rhythm section tape that we kept. I okay, believe. yeah, yeah. And then Mark came back in and put his guitars over it, so it was a little unique in that way. I think. All right, let's hear. Jesse Norell says hello. Hmm. Jesse Norell. I was also at the Varsity. Was at the um, for your album release. Right on. Yeah. Thanks, Jesse. Yeah, yeah. There you go. And Krista says hi too. Yeah. Who's that? <laughs> I played accordion at her wedding. That's awesome. I was the DJ. <laughs> a little bit. Okay. My dad's the accordionist of a band. Nice. <laughs> 
I suck at the, the buttons. That instrument will always haunt my dreams. He would show up every birthday at like camp and school with this giant accordion. I would run to the bathroom and just start crying because it was so embarrassing. <laughs> that? I used to play with this uh, uh, like um, folk combo. Um, some talented guys. Dan and I, the bass player, that was over. He has a you know an upright bass. Um, so we played with a guitarist and a mandolinist. Nice. Only time I've ever carried my instrument to a gig was with that band. I <laughs> suppose. <laughs> I used to play a Fender Rhodes um, from the '70s. Oh wow! Um, and they had a, what they called a suitcase model, <laughs> which would pack into two huge monoliths because it sat on top of its own amplifier. The amplifier was at least the size of the instrument <laughs> itself. This whole thing weighed 250 pounds altogether. <laughs> well, it was technically designed to be portable in the 70s version. Yeah, yeah. I, and I, I think I played with you the entire time you owned that instrument. You did. Unfortunately. <laughs> hundreds of shows with it, and we called that, like, oh. two pieces of, you know, oh, because it took two people to carry each piece. Right. Yeah. So groupies my, are far. My back couldn't handle it anymore, and I had to sell it. Yeah, that's... <laughs> I think my kids did not, we not, we're not at all musical, but the, you know, they're in the band in school. I'm like, did she just pick the flute or the, some little, let's not go with the, I know for sure you're not going to practice, so just go with it. <laughs> the. I don't understand this text from Krista. Oh. But I don't understand what I'm supposed to ask. Joy Division. Oh, of course. <laughs> of course, of course, of course. Two word text from Mark. Subtitles, dumbass. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, I was gonna save for when we go back, but yeah. Well, we'll wait until yeah. We'll wait. All right. <laughs> got, got some insider Chris, questions. Krista Chris, has given us some cryptic, cryptic uh -oh. clues for a question. <laughs> but sometimes the texting gets a little off. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, you know, what about the dog? Oh yeah. Yeah, and then I'm a little bit looking at time. should be on soundtracks. Like they're just something very somatic sounding. It's big. Yeah. But not overpowering? I don't know. Yeah? It's a big sound, but it's not like a metal band. It's not... I don't know. I, John uh, Miller, the guy that recorded us, did an amazing job of just... He just knows his studio, so setting up mics, oh. getting sounds, it was just like seamless. And then you go on and listen to it back and like, oh, yeah. That's what somebody who knows what they're doing can do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's all these crazy, uh, like, vintage mics and stuff. That wow, use. that would be fun. Yeah. That's the difference of when you do it at home versus when you, you know, you talk to a lot of people, you're like, yeah, it's... And just having somebody who's in charge of pressing record and making sure that it's yeah. static and you don't have to worry about it when you're in the band. It's so different than trying to do it all, do it all yourself. Right. The fact 
uh, Joel Epigram by Dallas Orbiter on Mostly Minnesota Music on WMCN 91.7 FM in St. Paul. And we are lucky enough to have two of the members here in studio. Greg and John, welcome. Hi. Hello. Hello. Thanks Hello. for having yeah. us. Yeah. yeah. We, we have a request question from the from the general public. Oh, uh-oh. Okay. Um, yeah. John, tell us how you started playing piano. How did I start playing piano? Well, according to my family... <laughs> this is... She um, cued us up. <laughs> according to my family, it was um, as soon as I was physically able to crawl up on the piano bench. Um, but they were watching TV one day, and they heard someone playing the piano, and they came upstairs, and it was... Four-year-old John, um, wow, fucking out. I think, I think it was the Notre Dame fight song because, <laughs> because my aunt was there at the time, and I had gone to see a football game. And it was all by ear. You didn't know, right? Yeah, and just, you just sat down and started playing it and yep. figured it out. And yeah, okay. What? <laughs> I mean, I'd always, I've always played by ear. Um, oh, have you had any classical training I or had, lessons? I've had twelve years of classical okay. lessons. Yeah, so. I love, you know, putting Mozart and all that stuff. Um, but, uh, like, I used to play in church, and they would have two sets of music, um, the organ music and the guitar music, and I would use the guitar music that just had the chords and the melody, and I would just make up my own parts. Um, you know, like, once I knew what the so how the song was supposed to go, I would just play it along. And, um, yeah, it was fun party trick sometimes. I just... <laughs> I took piano for one year from a nun who wore a full habit and <laughs> <laughs> I could not play by, you know, I like, what do you, do you look at the keys? Do you look at, what do you like? I cannot imagine that it's such a gift just amazing that you have honed and more and more. I mean, that's, but that's, wow. Yeah. I mean, for me, I kind of just hear the bass line in my head and then that tells me what the chord is and I go from there. Do you feel like because of that, the song changes every time you play it? Or do you have, like, once you play it once, you stick to that? Yeah, Dallas Orbiter, it's it's often, I mean, I, it's a mixture. There are parts okay. that are different every time, for sure. And then there are, you know, specifically lead lines or something like that that, that change. They have to be the same all the time. But, yeah, especially, you know, solos and stuff, it will depends on how I'm feeling that day. Very cool. I mean, it seems like all of the band members would have that sort of flexibility to go off book if they wanted to, you know. We, yeah. We do, and we and we do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. That's what keeps it fun. Yeah. You know, we're not we're not trying to perfect the song. We're just trying to make it better every time we play it and figure something new out. Again, that makes it more fun to see when you're, you know. Yeah, it's more of a performance than a. Yeah. Reenactment or. Exactly. Yeah. If we wanted the reenactment. Stay at home. We stay at home. We stay at home. And I'm going to ask you to remind us about the show coming up. I'm looking a little bit at the time. Yeah. Uh, Mortimer's, um, September 13th, Friday, with Field Hospitals and Upright Forms. Um, music starts at like 9-ish, uh, 9.30, I think. Um, 10 bucks at the door. We'll have our brand new vinyl there to sell. Nice. Um, orange swirly vinyl um awesome and uh with the free download codes and that kind of stuff uh hoping to have t-shirts uh we got some stickers and fun stuff but we're excited to get out and play again um and especially you know right in uptown that's a lot of fun um we haven't oh been, yeah we haven't played back there in a, quite a while so yeah yeah how involved do you guys get in like the merch and the picking out the t-shirts and stuff well uh greg and mark have been heading up most of that since we uh, started this project. Yeah, the, the album art was a friend from uh, from college and uh, he did an amazing job. So we've just been riffing on the, the astronaut and yeah. spaceman theme for the, all the stickers and everything like that. Um, but yeah, we all kind of dabble in this and that and like to be artistic in different ways. So um, yeah. We're, we're trying to do our own. I've even thought maybe I'd drag my daughter into doing some screen printing to make some t-shirts for us. But oh, nice. See if I can talk her into it. I bet you could. I bet you could. It's called Spaceman Things, by the way, the new album. Yes, thank you. Good work. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Yay. Thank you. And also, Joy Division is the band. <laughs> 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 the I mean, you guys have played in... So so many bands, so many iterations, and playing once a week. I mean, I I don't know how you can remember any of it, right? It's 
yeah, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of history. Yeah, it's uh, and it's still fun. It's still a lot of fun. Awesome. Do you want us to play one more out or? That'd be great. All I'm right. not going to turn down having our All right. radio, I, I just, radio. Usually I clear that before, but I thought, well, I'll put them on the spot. I'll just ask them if we could play one more. Sure. Um, let's throw out um, Blue Sky Chrome White. Ooh, that's a good one. Okay. Blue Sky <laughs> Chrome White, Dallas Arbiter. Yeah, then when we get back, we're kind of it's we're getting to close to where we're probably done. Thank you guys so much, and again, sorry for all the. Yeah. Oh no. You figured it out. Nice work. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, that was easier than for a long time. Only one mic worked. Uh, yeah. So you'd be like ask a question and whip it over there. Oh. There's still two mics there, so it's not easy to do. <laughs> Something different every. And that's something you don't find out about until you have ears right. on the... <laughs> can't hear one of you. Uh-huh. I had a lot of fun at college, doing college radio. I did production. Uh, I was like production manager for a while, like doing all the bumpers and props and whatnot. And nice. I, ended up, I was like the station, like the canned station voice for like 12 years after I left college because <laughs> I had done awesome. so many of them. <laughs> That's fantastic. They just like tag them on every promo they play. Like, Awesome. And then, yeah, I got paid during the summer, a couple summers, to oh, nice. work over the summer and keep the station running, which was a great summer yeah. job. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, we're... We have... Fo- and so they were quick to text back, but I don't, I don't know if they're on campus or... But they do fun things to the school. They'll have shows in the basement of the library and stuff like that. So I... Sometimes you get invited to it. I'm like, oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> what would you do if I showed up? <laughs> Your mom's here. <laughs> but they always seem like they do. And they have little events that they do back there. They'll make like, little badge. I think it's fun. I think it would be a fun. Yeah. It's a good tribe to join when you get to college. Yeah. It's a good group of people. That is when... Dropped my kid off at University of Winnipeg. That's all she wanted was a call, was a radio show. Great. It's, yeah. She did it actually. And then she, after she graduated, she stayed on and did some with uh, community stuff on the board or something. The uh, the faculty like advisor professor that ran the station at Oshkosh ended up being like. My dad away from home. Like, he was the nice. guy. Nice. Like, hey, quit being dumbass. <laughs> That's nice. You know? Yeah. That's... yeah. He, he knew what I was up to at college. My parents didn't. So he was, <laughs> you know, he was the one that would be like, no, knock it off. Yeah. What are you doing? Well, and it's easier to hear it not from the parent. You don't know. <laughs> you can't say that to a teacher. The thing about we didn't have a radio station. At a music school. That's crazy. We didn't I didn't think one. about yeah. Music school. With we no didn't radio have one, station. but I went to St. Kate, so that makes sense. But that's so they funny. They did not have a radio station at any point. Hmm. Huh. That's just seems just bizarre. Now that I think about it, I didn't yeah. think about it until so. yeah. Well, the IPR doesn't have one, do they? IPR is gone. Everything's gone. Oh. Yeah, IPR went under too. You could be opening up your weekly sessions to students to maybe make some. <laughs> yeah, we need an intro An intro, yeah. yeah. Somebody hit record for us and mm-hmm. get us mm-hmm. drinks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> a bartender, that's what we call that. <laughs> I just think it's fantastic how long you've done it and for how. I mean, it's so one thing to be given a gift to be able to play piano for, but to maintain it. Yeah. And. Yeah. Yeah, and to, to have the opportunity to like do it every week with people you know, like um, you know, some people like, like poker night or whatever. Yeah. Well, I think of sometimes of if you go to like church sales or up at the synagogue up there, uh, somebody's got their book club, fifty years of book club, and I, you 
have a weird version of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I forgot our theme today is um, jobs, spaceman things that fits. Yeah, sure. sure. <laughs> it's a cool job. Stretching for it. Blue Sky, Chrome White by Dallas Orbiter. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank, thank you. So much John for and us. Greg, yeah, that's it's been fantastic to hear more about the music and just the relationship that you guys have with the music and to each other is very inspiring. Right on. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. No, it's uh, it's been it has been and continues to be a ton of fun. So we hope that uh, we hope that the music uh, conveys some of that. It absolutely does. I said it, it very cinematic. <laughs> This is what happens at the end of the show yeah. always. Now I'm tired. <laughs> yes. Thank you. And we'll be sure to see you on September 13th at Mortimer's, 930, for the release. Yeah. And I want to say a big thank you to Krista at Elephants and Flowers Media yes. for helping us out. Um, she connected us with you guys, and she's been doing amazing work for us. So uh, thanks, Krista. <laughs> yeah. Krista has done us some solids in the time. So thank, yes. thank you as well. All right. Should we get back to music about jobs? Yeah, let's do Repo Man from Jeremy Messersmith. <laughs> 